Sixth grade lesson 7.7 7 is problem solving and combining like terms. And so I'm pretty sure this is your first introduction at like terms. So I'm going to take a little bit of time there first. So what like terms are, well, let me back up and just say what terms are, are the individual pieces of an equation or an expression. So you've been seeing terms all this time. You just haven't referred to them as terms. So in this expression, this is a term and this is a term. And you'll notice that I went ahead and boxed them off. And when I boxed this guy off, I boxed the, uh, the add sign in front of him. This is something I teach my seventh graders to do because for you guys in this lesson, um, adding or subtracting those like terms together will be fairly easy. But as you get into seventh grade, you start dealing with positives and negatives and calculating with the positives and negatives. And that becomes a factor when you're combining like terms. So I tell my seventh graders, cage off your terms. So I'm just going to show you guys that now so that it helps us bridge over into next year where we cage off our terms. Notice this guy doesn't have a positive or negative sign in front of him. If there isn't a sign in front of them from the expression itself, then you know it's positive. So I just tell them, put it there, put the positive there. Same here, we have the term 2x, no sign in front of him. Uh, but there is a sign hanging out right in front of the 5. Those are the two terms in that expression. So the terms are just the things that separate your calculation pieces apart, the add and subtract symbols that separate your calculation pieces apart. Those are terms. So now that we recognize what terms are, let's talk about like terms. Constants or numbers that won't change by a variable, those what those are, um, are like terms. So I could put those two things together. So like 3 and 8 are like terms. 12 and 3 would be like terms. What those aren't like are something like 2x. 12 and 2x are different terms. They are not alike, so you cannot put them together because uh, 2 is being multiplied by x, and we don't know what x is yet, so we cannot put it together with the constant 12 yet. Okay? So um, another like set of like terms would be a same variable to the same power, like 2x and... 5x, let's say, or 7x and 12x, let's say. Notice they have the same variable to the same power, um, 4y and 6y, 3x squared, there's what we mean by the power, and 5x squared. In order to be a like term, it would have to be to the same power, the same letter, the same variable raised to the same power in order to be a like term. To help understand this, I'm going to also show you some things that are not like terms so that your brain can wrap around this. And I'll do several examples so it gives time for your brain to digest this. So some like terms might be 12 and 5 both constants, not being multiplied by any unknown number. They are just that. 12 is 12, 5 is 5, that's it. Something that is not a like term would be if I had like 3x and 50. 50 is a constant. It's not being multiplied by anything, it's just 50. 3x is not a constant. It's being multiplied by some unknown number. 3 is being multiplied by some unknown number, and we don't know it yet. They're not like terms, I cannot just put them together. Another set of like terms might be 4y and 7y. Same um, variable being multiplied by each coefficient raised to the same power. I could put those together. If I had 4y plus 7y, if I had 4y's here and 7y's there, I can put them together to have 11y's. What I cannot put together is for y and 7x. These are not like terms because y is representing a different unknown number than x is. So I can't take four apples 
and seven oranges and then put them together to say I have uh, a, the same um, 11 of the same thing. I don't have 11 oranges if I put four apples with it, right? So I cannot put together unlike terms. So unlike term, different variable being multiplied, I can't marry them together. Another example of like terms would be like 2y squared and 5y squared, or to the second power. This variable is being raised to the second power, and this is the same letter variable being raised to the second power. So I could put those together. If I have 5y squares and 2y squares, I can put them together to be 7y squares. What I cannot put together is if I have 2y squares and 5y. Those aren't the same value. A y to the second power, let's say it's 2. 2 to the second power is 4. 2 by itself is just 2. So I can't just put those together. They are different things. Okay? Uh, one more example of what is a like term. 8x to the third and 3x to the third. These are the same variable representing the same unknown number raised to the same power, to the third power. I could put those together, 8x to the third and 3x to the third put together is 11x to the third. What's not like terms and I can't put together would be, here's another example, I have the same variable, yes, that's good, but this one is raised to the third power and this one is raised to the second power. These are different numbers because of those exponents. Yes, their base is the same unknown number, but as soon as we multiply that exponent through, it's going to be a different number. So I cannot put those together as like terms. These are unlike terms. Uh, I'll give one more example of an un, uh, unlike term. Let's say I had 3y to the second and 3x to the second. Yes, they are raised to the same power, but they are different bases. This is not going to end up being the same number. So, um, so these can't be put together either. So it's just getting our brain to wrap around what items can I marry together, can I put together, and what items can I not put together. And that's what this lesson will address. Okay, and the, in your book, they have a little chart at the top of um, the beginning of lesson 7.7 .7 that has algebraic expression, the terms that are there, and the like terms. And I'm just going to, again, take it a step further. Um, the first one, the expression they give us is 5x plus 3y minus 2x. I'm going to take it a step further. It's not a difficult step further. And just get you in the habit of caging your terms off. So I have this 5x term. No sign in front of him at all. Go ahead and put a positive. I have this 3y term. Include the sign that's sitting there in front of him. And I have this 2x term. Include the sign that's sitting in front of him. And I'm going to put together any like terms that I have. Actually, I don't even have to put them together. I just need to identify what are my like terms in here. I'm looking for anything, each of them have a variable. I'm looking for it to be the same variable raised to the same power. And so you're probably noticing, oh, well this 5x and this negative 2x are like terms. They are. And that's all you need to recognize. What are the like terms? Next step will be put those together. That's the simplifying they're talking about in this lesson, simplifying like terms or combining like terms. Uh, put those together. I have a 5x and I'm taking two x's away. Right here I have 5x and I'm taking two x's away. Okay, that's three x's. And I still have that 3y there. That's all I can do. That's all I can do until somebody tells me what x is and somebody can tell me what y is. That's combined. That's simplified. Okay. Let's look at another expression, the other one they give us there. 8z to the second plus 4z plus 12z to the second. I always put these little lines through my z's, and right here you can see why when I write things, especially as I get writing pretty fast, my 2's and z's start to look a lot alike. So for that reason, my z's always have uh, lines through them to tell my brain, hey, that's a z, not a 2. 
you'll start finding tricks in your own writing. You'll see things that bleed together a little bit and you get confused if you get writing too fast. So you'll make little tricks like that to keep it from, from doing that. So first step I would say is, again, let's get into the habit of caging these off. The, the, the sooner you do that, the easier it becomes. So I have the term 8z to the second power. No symbol in front of him. He's positive. If it were negative, it would say so. Then I have this term 4z. Just go ahead and include that add sign in front of him. And now we just kind of look at him as a positive 4z. And then I have the term 12z to the second. Go ahead and include that sign that's sitting right in front of him. So we're thinking of him as a positive 12z square. Now take a look. Which are like terms? Of those three terms, which ones are like terms? Remember, a like term will have the same variable raised to the same power. And yes, you are right. 8z to the second and 12z to the second are like terms. Both are positive. And so if they asked us to put those together, we would simply add their coefficients together. 8 plus 12, which is 20. Oopsie. Twenty z's to the second, and then that just leaves me with four z to the one power, or just z. That's as simplified as I can get until somebody tells me what z is, and then I'd be able to solve it. So one of the things you'll have trouble with at first in this lesson is that's going to be your answer. Is is not a solid one number answer in these. It's just like that's as, that's it. That's it as far as I can go. Okay. And last one that they give us, 15 minus 3x plus 5 is the expression. Go ahead and cage those off. Think about how those would cage off and then see if that's how it gets caged off. I take the first term, 15, no sign in front of him, he's a positive. Take the term 3x, include that subtract sign. Now you can think of him as a negative 3x. Take the term 5. There's an add sign in front of him. Include it. It's plus uh, positive 5. Now, let's look for like terms. So like terms are either they're both constants, they're both just a number with no variable attached to them, or they are um, a coefficient for a variable that's the same letter raised to the same power. And you're probably starting to see them now. Uh, this is a constant without a variable attached to him, and this is a constant without a variable attached to him. This one doesn't have anybody's out there. It's just all that he's the only one like him in that expression. I can go ahead and put these together. This is a positive 15 and a positive 5. Add those together and you're going to get 20. And then I still have that negative 3x there. There's my expression put together. It's simplified. So when you put together your like terms in this section you're going to hear them say, you're going to see them say simplify the expression that's what they mean take a look at your expression and marry your like terms and get it down to its simplest form that you can do right now this is the simplified version of this this is the simplified version of this this is the simplified version of that and that's what this lesson is covering for the most part okay so they give us a word problem um, and in this one, by the way, they do give us the expression, so they do the translation for us. However, I am going to take you through the process of uh, translating from all the English into the mathies, the expression, so that you can see it happen. Because while in this lesson, for the most part, most of the questions do give you that, you are going to encounter um, the ones where you have to do the translation yourself. So the earlier you start seeing it, the easier it becomes. So without any pressure involved, you're going to see me go through the translation on this. You know what answer I have to come up with. Let me show you how they got there. And we use the same steps we've been using all year long. Read the question. Underline the, the question asked. Or read the whole thing. Underline the question they ask. Circle the information they provided to you. Draw it, especially with these. It helps a lot to draw it. And then solve it. So let's go ahead and do that. Baseball caps cost $9 and patches cost $4. Shipping is $8 per order. The expression 9n plus 4n plus 8 gives the cost in dollars of buying caps with patches for n players. 
Simplify the expression 9n plus 4n plus 8 by combining like terms. So first thing um, I'm going to do is underline the question. They want me to simplify that expression that they came up with for us, but I'm going to go ahead and come up with that expression so you can see how they got that. Um, circle the information they gave us. We know that caps, each cap is $9. Each patch is $4. Shipping is $8 per order. And um, they're buying, here's kind of a key piece of information. They're buying caps and patches. So it's like, um, it's like a package deal. One cap and one patch for every player. But we don't know how many players, right? But each one, each player is getting a cap and a patch. So I'll draw the picture. They're doing caps that are $9 and a patch that is $4. Pretend that's a patch. Uh, together. For we don't know how many players, but every player gets one. And then after they do their order, they also have to pay the shipping cost, which is $8. Okay, that unknown amount, you're starting to get used to the fact that I've got to assign a variable to that. I can choose the letter. They cho chose N, so we'll use theirs. Um, we're going to tell our brains, okay, brain, let's let N be the amount of players, the unknown amount of players, number of players, okay? So I know for one person, one player, the cap is $9. So nine times however many players. Uh, see, that's supposed to be a pointer. Let me fix that. Fix that. Okay. Uh, nine times, it's the cost of the cap times however many players we have. Also, that same amount of people in they are all getting a patch, and those patches are for each. And so that's going to cost money. That's why I use the addition. And then once they complete the order, when they know how many people they're buying it for, they also know they need to add the $8 shipping. It's just one for the whole order, so they, you don't have to multiply that by anything. That's how they came up with the expression 9n plus 4n plus 8. Okay, I need to simplify the expression... 9n plus 4n plus 8. I need to use the like terms 9n and what? What is the like term with 9n in these terms? You're right, 4n. Because it's, it's multiplied by the same variable raised to the same power. I can use a bar model to find the sum of the two terms. So they went ahead and bar modeled this, and you will only need the bar model for a short amount of time. If you need it at all, you'll get the hang of putting them together very easily. This draw a bar model and add 9n and 2n, and each square represents n or 1n. This is a little bit of an important piece here. n and 1n mean the same thing. You only see 1n there. No coefficient in front of the variable means there's one of them there. And so both of those mean the same thing. Anytime you see just the variable by itself, you could also just call it one variable. Both mean the same thing. Okay, but we have nine ends here, and we have, oh, sorry, that's wrong. This is four, four ends there. They put it in a bar graph. There's nine, there's four. Put them all together, nine plus four, right? That's all you're doing, uh, is 13 ends. So the model shows that 9n plus 4n is 13n's. And so to simplify our expression here, 9n plus 4n is 13n, that takes care of that. The 8 is a loner. He doesn't have anybody to be married to or to, to be uh, combined with. So he just stays an 8. So we end up with 13n plus 8. The simplified expression for the cost in dollars is 13n plus 8. This is, again, where I know people struggle with at first. Like, wait, isn't it supposed to be just a number? Am I supposed to have an answer? You can't right now because we don't know how many people they're buying those caps and patches for. But we're ready. We're ready with the simplest form calculation that we can make so that when they do tell us how many, we just plug that in real quick and then calculate it real quick. So...
that's why we do that. That's why we simplify them, just to make it as easy as possible so that when we do get that last piece of information, we can calculate quickly. Okay, let's look at the next one. Again, this one gives us the expression already, and they translated for us, but let me walk you through the process of getting that translation through, and then we will uh, simplify the, the expression. Paintbrushes normally cost $5 each, but they are on sale for $1 off. A paintbrush case costs $12. The expression 5P minus P plus 12 can be used to find the cost in dollars of buying P paintbrushes on sale plus a case for them. Simplify the expression 5P minus P plus 12 by combining the like terms. We are going to simplify that expression by combining the like terms after we've translated to see how they got that. Circle the information. Pa uh, the paint brushes are normally $5. Each one is on sale for a dollar off, negative one, right? And the case costs $12. Okay, so I have a paint brush. I'm drawing my picture now. And that is $5. But right now, each one paintbrush is on sale for a dollar off. And then I want to buy the case to hold all those paintbrushes. That's $12. So how much will I be spending? Well, I don't know yet. I can't just add these together yet because the question is, I don't know, how many paintbrushes are you buying? And so as soon as we say, hmm, how many of this are you doing? Or how many of that is there going to be? That's when your brain will start getting used to, oh, let me give it a variable. So let's let P equal the amount of paint brushes, number of paint brushes that we're buying. We don't know how many. What we do know is when we know how much that is, we will multiply how many you're buying times five. Five times P, however many paintbrushes you're buying, it's $5 per one paintbrush, right? So five times P will tell you how many paintbrushes you're buying when you know how many. We also know that for every one paintbrush, you get to take a dollar off. Now remember earlier when I said one as a coefficient in front of that can be also written as just the letter like that. Now for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as a one. But if it's written like that and you want that one in front of there so you can calculate with it, feel free to add the one in front of it. And then I'm only buying one case at $12. So that's not gonna, that doesn't have to be multiplied by anything. And there's the expression that they got, 5P minus P plus 12. The only difference is 5P minus, we went ahead and put that invisible coefficient of one in front of P. It's still one P there. There's only one P, that's all you see there. Um, but we put the coefficient, we should let the coefficient show. Okay, remember I said, let's cage off those uh, terms so that we can see them more clearly. This is a good reason why we do that. I have five uh, P's, I have a negative one P. So a subtract sign and negative sign kind of go is the same thing. And I have positive 12. Now they asked us, so we need to find our like terms. And what information do we use? Well, 5P minus 1P plus 12. Um, I think we need to, they also want us to put here um, number of paint brushes. Okay. How will I use this information to simplify it? Combine like terms. I don't know what the teacher's book has. I don't have the teacher's book. I just, that's, that's what I'm thinking they want. If you, know, if you have access to the teacher's book, you can see what they wrote there. Um, take a look at our expression. What are our like terms? Mm -hmm. We have a positive 5P and a negative 1P of 5 and take away 1P. 5P and take away 1P. So if I have 5P and I take away 1P, how many P's do I have? Now, I can do that as a bar model if I need to. But again, some of you won't need to do that pretty quickly. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 P's. And this time, instead of adding more to it, I'm taking one off of there. How many P's are that? And you're starting to notice like, Am I just adding and subtracting those depending on what's going on? Yes, 
that's what you're doing. So 5p subtract 1p is a total of 4p. That took care of those. This guy is a loner. He does not have a like term to combine with, so we just leave him like that. And that is your answer. You cannot do anything else until somebody comes along and says, Psst, by the way, you're buying this many paint brushes. Oh, yeah, then you would plug that amount, like we did in the previous lesson, into, um, into that, multiply by 4 and add 12. But for now, that's all you can do. That's your answer. That's the simplified um, expression. So combining like terms. That's it. I'm going to do one more with you. And then I think you're ready to go on. Again, most of the ones you're going to see in your practice problems, they do the translation for you. I challenge you to at least try and make sense of where they got those numbers and why they put it like that um, so that your brain is getting used to it like a crutch. You're learning to walk, but you're using, uh, or like a walker when you learned to walk. You're, you're learning to walk, but you're using a walker. Then putting that expression in those word problems for you is the walker. Don't just ignore the other information. Zoom in on the expression and do the work. Use this chance to figure out how did they get that. Okay, let's look at one. Okay, this is one of the ones after off the Sharon show. I uh, just thought I'd help you through it. Um, each cheerleading uniform includes a shirt and a skirt. Shirts cost $12 each and skirts cost $18 each. And we know that each person in the cheerleading squad is going to need both a shirt and a skirt. The expression 12U plus 18U represents the cost in dollars of buying U amount of uniforms. Simplify the expression by combining like terms. And so, yeah, it would be quick to do that and just say, oh, they gave me the expression 12U plus 18U. All right, here we go. Let me marry the like terms. Um, but let's take this chance to see how they got that expression. Um, they're going to buy a shirt for $12 each. They're going to buy a skirt for $18 each. And since each person needs both, then the whole uniform, you're buying the same amount of each. Okay? So I'm got buying shirts. I don't know how many, but I do know they're 12 apiece. And I'm also buying skirts. Pretend that's a skirt. Um, I don't know how many, but they're 18 a piece. But I will be buying the same amount of each. Now, if this were, I was buying a different amount of these, I'd have to give a different variable to each. But in this case, I'm buying the same amount of each. So let's, um, to make a full uniform is uh, let's let u is the variable they use. You could use x, you could use z, you could use whatever, but they used u, so let's use u for uniform. Let u equal the number of uniforms that they need to buy from wherever they're buying them from. How many uniforms? And the uniform includes the shirt and the skirt. Okay, so once they know how many uniforms, remember it's only $12 for one, then we would multiply 12 times that unknown number of U, how many uniforms they need, and add it to uh, $18 for the same amount because they're buying the same amount for each uh, of shirts as they are skirts. So I could use the same variable U. Since these are like terms, I can just add them together. 12 U's plus 18 U's is a total of 30 U's. That's your simplified version. You cannot get it down to a specific answer yet because at this point in time, we do not know how many uniforms will be bought. When somebody comes along and says, Psst, you're buying 10 uniforms, okay, plug in 10 for you and then do the multiplication. $300, right? So that's how you do these. Again, the majority of your problems do the translation, but please take the time to see how did they get this from this. Take the time to get your brain to understand it. It will make it easier for you later, I promise. Instead of just kind of glancing through and saying, there's my equation, my expression, I'm going, right? It's easy to do that, and I know it takes less time, but it will help you in the long run to just at least take a look and see how did they get that. Okay, good luck. Go get them.